No, that's not happening. Mm -hmm. I think there's a scale of in between. So, how many verses are we Two, okay. Mm -hmm.
on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Let us pray. By your help, we beseech you, Lord our God. May we walk eagerly in that same charity with which, out of love for the world, your Son handed himself over to death. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. Although the body is 
dead because of sin. The spirit is alive because of righteousness. If the spirit of the one who raised Jesus from the dead dwells in you, the one who raised Christ from the dead will give life to your mortal bodies also through his spirit dwelling in you. The word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. Only about two miles away. 
And many of the Jews had come to Martha and Mary to comfort them about their brother. When Martha heard that Jesus was coming, she went to meet him, but Mary sat at home. Martha said to Jesus, Lord, if you had been here, my brother would have not died. But even now I know that whatever you ask of God, God will give you. Jesus said to her, Your brother will rise. Martha said to him, I know he will rise in the resurrection on the last day. Jesus told her, I am the resurrection and the life. Whoever believes in me, even if he dies, will live. And everyone who lives and believes in me will never die. Do you believe this? She said to him, Yes, Lord. I have come to believe that you are the Christ, the Son of God, the one who is coming into the world. When she had said this, she went and called her sister Mary secretly, saying, The teacher is here and he is asking for you. As soon as she heard this, she rose quickly and went to him. But Jesus had not come into the village, because, sorry, but was still where Martha had met him. So when the Jews who were with her in the house comforting her, saw Mary get up quickly and go out, they followed her, presuming, presuming that she was going to the tomb to weep there. When Mary came to where Jesus was and saw him, she fell at his feet and said to him, Lord, if you had been here, my brother would have not died. When Jesus saw her weeping, and the Jews who had come with her weeping, he became perturbed and deeply troubled and said, Where have you laid him? They said to him, Sir, come and see. And Jesus wept. So the Jews said, See how he loved him. But some of them said, Could not the one who opened the eyes of the blind man have done something so that this man would not have died. So Jesus perturbed again came to the tomb. It was a cave, and a stone lay across it. Jesus said, Take away the stone. Martha, the dead man's sister, said to him, Lord, by now there will be a stench. He has been dead for four days. Jesus said to her, Did I not tell you that if you believe, you will see the glory of God? So they took away the stone, and Jesus raised his eyes and said, Father, I thank you for hearing me. I know that you always hear me. But because of the crowd here, I have said this, that they may believe that you sent me. And when he had said this, he cried out in a loud voice, Lazarus, come out. The dead man came out, tied hands, hand and foot with burial bands, and his face was wrapped in a cloth. So Jesus said to them, Untie him and let him go. Now many of the Jews who had come to Mary and seen what had what he had done began to believe in him. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. I don't know how it feels for you, Carol and Greg, to play alone in the church here. <laughs> it's strange for us and for me as well to give reflection uh, and I'm sure there are people so many people who are joining and who are participating or celebrating mass with us praying with us at this time uh, as you know we have always a joke to begin with there was a an atheist who died 
and his friend went to the funeral home and he looked at his friend in the casket. His friend was well dressed and so he said, buddy, you all, you, go, you have dressed very well. Now you do not know where you are going, you know. You don't know where you are, you don't know the place to go. <laughs> or there's a, a funeral home director called the man and asked him, what shall I do with the body of your mother-in-law? Embalming and cremation or, embalm or burial? And this guy replied, all the three. <laughs> I don't want to take any chance at all. <laughs> Well, today we have like 45 verses of the long gospel in the gospel of John, uh, the, the rising of uh, uh, Lazarus. And of course, first reading and second reading and the response to song, they are all inspiring in every way. But just want to have some of this, in this context of our uh, coronavirus, I'm just reflecting on the gospel, uh, just like four points, how we can be strengthened in our faith. First of all, imagine what would have been the reaction of Martha and Mary when they sent a messenger to tell Jesus, the one you loved is ill, is sick. I remember one family was not coming to church, very good family. And I asked why they are not coming to church and coming for Mass. And they told me the reason. My mother was dying in the hospital and I called the church office asking for a priest to come and see, but nobody came. First time, second time, but no one came to see my mom and my mom died. And I have been part of this church for so many years, giving and contributing and for, without missing mass and everything. But when my family was in need of the priest and service of the priest from this church, nobody came. So we decided not to go back again to the church. And probably Martha and Mary could have felt the same thing. Jesus has been going to Martha and Mary's place so many times. Well, if he is coming, I'm not going, Martha would have said, I'm not going to cook for him anything. He can go, he can go away. When I am in need, when we are in need, our only brother, he loved him and he loved us so much and I, I sent a word to him, but he is not coming here to see immediately. So that could have been the reaction for Martha and Mary, but they did not react that way. They did not react that way. And if Martha could have, Martha and Mary could have risen, if Jesus is who he says he is, the Messiah, the Son of God, he could have done something when we are in need. But then he is totally indifferent to our prayer, to our crying. And people today can feel the same thing. Why God is indifferent to our prayers? Why we have to go through this struggle that we are going through the whole world. And here, as per the report, in, uh, right now in the United States, we have more than 116,000 people contracted with the coronavirus. We are not sure how many people are going to be the survivors of the coronavirus. It's very alarming and really uh, hard for us to imagine and think if what is going to be the fate of all these people who are contracted with the coronavirus. Here in Michigan is going to be almost 4,000 people coming. So we can ask, we can ask all millions of questions, why God is indifferent? Why God is not answering our prayers? But was Jesus indifferent in, the Mar in Lazarus situation? He tells so that the glory of God may be revealed. We do not know how the glory of God is going to be revealed in this situation, with this crisis. So all that we have to do is, we have to continue to place our trust and confidence in the Lord. In the Lord. So Jesus was not inactive. He was just postponing so that the glory of God will be revealed. If he had to go when he was ill, things would have been like any other miracle. 
but here Jesus is proving that he is the Lord of the resurrection he is the Lord of life I am the resurrection of the life so that is the thing. Sometimes we can find that God is indifferent to us, to our prayers and our cries, but God is not indifferent to us, but He listens, He knows our cry. Again, the reaction of the apostles here, the disciples. When Jesus said, We need to go to Judea, we need to go to Bethany, and said, Are you crazy? They are all looking for you to be killed. We shall not go there, it is dangerous. You know, my friend, our, my, our friend Lazarus has died. Well, if he's died, what are you going to do? He is dead already. Why do you put your own life to risk? And our life is in risk. So let us not go there. They are trying to stop. But here, Thomas tells, let's also go and die with him. Let us also go and die with him. And Thomas tells, because of his loyalty to Jesus, his commitment and friendship and loyalty to Jesus. I don't want to leave Jesus alone. Let us also go and die with him. Thomas said this, but he does not fully understand what Jesus is intending to do when he goes there. He does not understand his plan. So this is another point of reflection for us. We don't understand everything what God is going to do with us. Thomas, when he said, let us also go and die with him, he did not fully understand what Jesus' plan saw by going to Bethany. But he said, because of the loyalty to Jesus, let us go with him. So we don't understand a lot of things in our own life. God's plan we don't understand. But still, we need to have our faith in Jesus without losing our hope in him, like Thomas. And reaction of Martha and Mary. Of course, Martha runs to Jesus and tells if you had been here, my brother would have not died, if you had been here. So Martha seems to understand Jesus, a kind of, it's a mediator between God and whatever he is going to ask, God is going to give. And if you had been here, my brother would have not died. Jesus said, he will rise. I know he will rise on the last day, on the day of the resurrection. And probably Jesus looked at her, Martha, and said, hey, who do you think I am? I am the resurrection and the life. Do you believe this? And Martha said, I do believe, Lord. And so we find Jesus dead. So her, maybe Martha was having an idea that Jesus is like a mediator, but then, no, I am God. I am God's only son. I am the resurrection and the life. And if you believe, your brother will live and tells the same thing. So this is something, so we may have some, some kind of idea about God, but we need to believe and understand that Jesus is truly our Savior, our Messiah. And again, when we have a problem, what we have to do, the fourth point, invite Jesus into our life, invite Jesus into our family. Martha and Mary had the crisis, and Lazarus was ill, what did they do? They sent the word, to Jesus, asking him to come. And here, when he came, although delayed, but then he came. But what was the situation? It was a hopeless, hopeless situation. That it died. he died four days back. And body would have been decomposing, smelling. So, but then God of, God, our God is a God of, God of hope. Not hopeless, even a hopeless situation there is nothing impossible for God to redeem it and put it back. So Martha and Mary had a problem, and problem, not simple problem, a crisis, is their only brother died. And what did they do? They invited Jesus to come and see their problem. So no matter what kind of problem that we face right now, and all those people who may watch this video later, and maybe just in the hospital, contracted by the, because of the, by the coronavirus, affected by the coronavirus, or people who are waiting to get admitted in the hospital, invite Jesus. Invite Jesus into your life. And He will be there to help you. And people who are afraid of losing their job, and people who are afraid of losing their business because of this uh, crisis that we have, invite Jesus.
into your family. No matter what problem that you encounter today in your family, invite Jesus. Martha and Mary invited Jesus. And although it was a helpless situation, a hopeless situation, where Lazarus died four days and the body was decomposing, still miracle, miracle, miracle took place, that Jesus could raise Jesus, uh, Lazarus. So let us ask the Lord to bless every one of us, no matter what situation that we are in. Let us invite Jesus into our lives and He will save us. Let us profess our faith. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one God, Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, life from life, true God from true God, begotten not made. Consubstantial with the Father, through him all things were made. For us men and for our salvation, he came down from heaven. By the Holy Spirit was incarnate the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake he was crucified and once his father. He suffered death and was buried, and rose again on the third day, in accordance with his he ascended into heaven, and he is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead. And his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets, I believe in one holy Catholic and Apostolic Church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and the life of the world to come, and the life of the world to come. Amen. Trusting in the life-giving power of the Spirit, we lift up our prayers and petitions to our Father in Heaven. The response is, Lord, hear our prayer. That all leaders and members of the Church may be graced with the guidance and wisdom of the Holy Spirit, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That word leaders may be helped by God in putting aside selfish agendas and seek justice and equality for the people under their care. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That those who are in mourning may be consoled by God in their grief and may come to them in the hope of resurrection. For the loved ones, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That all the members of this faith community may receive the mercy of God for themselves, and with His help offer it to others, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That our beloved dead and all those who have died may know the joy and fullness of life in heaven. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Our meditation for today is for James Oliver. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Let us take a brief moment to pray for all those people who are infected with the coronavirus or facing quarantine. For people at high risk of developing the disease. For medical professionals, caregivers, and researchers responsible for fighting this virus. 
for the leaders responsible making decisions about the virus. For families and children making adjustments to this new way of life at home. For business owners and families facing financial crisis. For the grocery store workers, delivery drivers and all the essential workers throughout the country. We pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear our prayer. prayer. Almighty God, we know that everything is in your sovereign control. We ask that you keep this new coronavirus from continuing to spread. Give government officials the ability to safely handle people arriving from other places, from one place to other place, or people who are waiting to be admitted in the hospitals. And com comfort the families as they decide to keep their distance from the elderly and other high-risk family members. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Amen.
Through him, the host of angels adores your majesty and rejoices in your presence forever. May our voices, we pray, join with theirs in one chorus of exultant praise as we acclaim. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many, for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. Remember, Lord, in your church, spread throughout the world, and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis our Pope, and Paul our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember your servant James, whom you have called from this world to yourself. Grant that he who was united with your Son in a death like this may also be one with him in his resurrection. Remember also our brothers and sisters, who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection, and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the Blessed Apostles, and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co heirs to eternal life, and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him, and with him, and in him, O God Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours for
those who are those who have joined for the mass through the facebook and we have a prayer for you please join me in praying my jesus i believe that you are present in the most blessed sacrament i love you above all things and i desire to receive you into my soul since i cannot now receive you sacramentally Come at least spiritually into my heart. I embrace you as if you were already there and unite myself wholly to you. Never permit me to be separated from you. Amen. body of Christ. Amen. The body of Christ. The body of Christ. Mm -hmm.
Let us pray. We pray, Almighty God, that we may always be counted among the members of Christ, in whose body and blood we have communion, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Bow your heads and pray for God's blessing. Bless, O Lord, your people, who long for the gift of your mercy, and grant that what at your prompting they desire, they may receive by your generous gift, through Christ our Lord. Amen. May Almighty God bless you all, the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go in peace. And thanks be to God. God. Once again, thank you, Craig, thank you, Carol, and Irma, and all those who have joined uh, through the Facebook. And as I have been telling, Facebook, not many people use it, and a lot of people are not able to watch, participate in the live or the word streamed mass from our church. Uh, YouTube will be the best platform, but unfortunately, YouTube doesn't allow live streaming unless one person has 1,000 subscribers. And that's why I'm trying to ask people to subscribe, so at least uh, for Easter, all the Holy Week celebration weekend, people, everybody can participate and celebrate also. Okay, thank you and God bless you. Have a wonderful evening. Tomorrow we have 9 o'clock mass that will be live streamed, so please 
pass on pass the word to your friends and invite them to be there on the facebook at nine o'clock god bless you